Welcome to this uh, special edition of Gamer Actor Live, where today we are joined by an actual game developer. They're here. And it's uh, Press Play from uh, beautiful Denmark, uh, who just recently released a new sequel to uh, the popular platform game. Um, Max and the Magic Marker was the first game, and the second is Max, the Curse of the Brotherhood, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's Xbox One for now. It's also being developed by uh, or for Xbox 360, right? That's true. Okay, so you should probably go ahead and introduce yourself instead of just letting me uh, ramble. Uh, my name is uh, Miguel Martin Peterson, and uh, I was uh, the lead designer of uh, Max the Curse of Brotherhood. And my name is uh, Lasse Nydelbo, and I am a uh, lead artist on Max the Curse of Brotherhood. Cool. So instead of uh, me asking you tons and tons of questions, I think it will work better if we just see your skills in your actual game. Yeah. So don't fail. <laughs> be, uh, be awesome and, uh, and try to. Take as it always. Away. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's start by uh, seeing the intro. <coughs> so this is a story that uh, that takes place. Right after the first game, or basically, Max the Curse of Brotherhood. We don't see it as a sequel okay. to Max and the Magic Marker. We see it more as a, a spiritual successor. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should just see the intro. Sure. Brother, oh brother of mine, I wish you'd be erased from all of time. I wish your traces could be gone from all places. That evil itself could take you away. Nope, no, but I think Handy Sorcery actually exists. Okay. <laughs> it's leading to our path with time. That's how it starts. <laughs> nice. So uh, it's not necessarily a game based on a deep storyline. No, basically we with the game we wanted the game to start like with a yeah. bang and and then just get rolling. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and Maxi enters this uh, world. We call it another land, and uh, immediately has to try to save his little ball. Yeah. No, but it's not a complicated Japanese story <laughs> where no. you have to like watch cutscene after cutscene. It's it's pretty straightforward, but yeah. we still want people to have this uh, emotional contact with the uh, with uh, Max, and yes. his, his hunt for his little brother. It probably would have surprised people if you had just completely changed for the sequel or for the new game, and it had become like a deep Japanese role-playing game. Yes. With uh, that would have been weird. <laughs> But it's a basic, straightforward platform game when you when you start it up. Yeah. Um, you control Max. It's side scrolling. Yeah, um, I uh, should probably say that I played the first two worlds so far. And uh, already I can see that you tried the game before. That's uh, <laughs> already a lot at, of at times. this point of time I had already like died three times or so. Uh, Just uh, not at this point I think. But uh, But I mean, uh, it will probably show when uh, when you get a bit further in the game. But it is kind of a challenging game, isn't it? It is. Uh, always when you do like a puzzle game, it's it's really uh, uh, it's, it's very difficult to find the right balance yeah. uh, between how difficult the game should be. Um, we the, the game is a mix of uh, puzzles and uh, platforming. Uh, so you have like this uh, fine balance between having something where you're have to be able to control the game fast, <coughs> and uh, but there's also moments where I have to sit and solve puzzles. Yeah. I like the fact that that Max just seems to accept all this. Just kind of yes, this of course <laughs> is what happened. <laughs> 
Yeah, he, he's, uh, he reacts pretty fast yeah. to whatever happens. He's not this, a, this really doesn't seem unusual to him. It's like everyday stuff. What isn't that like all about being a, a child and, yeah. and, and easily hero. accept how <laughs> stuff is? Probably have thrown the first stone there. Yeah, uh, Nick and I will be playing. Uh, I should say that that you guys are probably here for an hour or so. So Nick and I will be uh, playing for another hour when when you guys have left, and we will show some of the concept uh, drawings that that you send us. But can you go into detail about the, the design of this monster? I can. It uh, it was quite clear that we wanted to have a balance between. There's a lot of puzzles in this game. And, and we're not, we haven't reached any of them yet, but um, but we wanted to have some sort of driving force in the game that would make sure that you have a lot of action sequences and places where you have to just run and and get out of there. Yeah. Uh, so we came up with this big beast that was um, in the beginning. It we wanted to, to just have it like roam around the forest, but it turned out to actually have to provide some really cool gameplay. Yeah. So. Uh, you actually encounter this beast quite a few times throughout the game. And um, here we see that even a developer can fail themselves. Uh, the I think that was intentional, wasn't it? But did you actually die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> but but you never um, you never considered actually. I mean, it, based on the first game at least, it, it doesn't seem like the game the sort of game where, where Max should be able to defend himself against a monster like this. It's more of a like a horror in the game <coughs> that you need to escape, right? You need to escape, and we really wanted to, to emphasize the the fragility of this little boy in a really big, dangerous world. So the contrast between a child and something really big and brutal mm. is, is just obvious. Yeah. And, and so we try to play on on contrasts, yeah. actually, throughout the game. And we try to use the camera, as you see here, yeah, the scale a lot is to like zoom in and out and make sure that people believe in the world, it's not just a, a, a camera that's stuck in a plane. Uh, so it's panning around, zooming in, and just creating this whole world. When, when, uh, when you guys decided to uh, also develop this game for, uh, for Xbox One, uh, did that give you like an extra sort of tool set to, to, uh, to uh, apply to the graphics or to the it, game Of itself? course, I mean, the, 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 it's a stronger machine, so Full HD and 60 frames yep. is some of the things that we got out of of, of uh, moving on to the Xbox One. Yeah, uh, and we also had a chance to just give the whole graphics, uh, the, all the graphics, uh, an extra overhaul. Mm. Um, we have spent almost three years on the game, so it's not like we had like. I mean, there was a lot of the whole content was there when we started on the Xbox One development. Yeah. We had we actually changed quite a few things in this okay. uh, in the four months that we spent on on porting it. Only four months. Yeah, that must have been a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Max is uh, on the way up of this uh, earth pillar that, that we saw like in the total shot. Yeah. And uh, basically, you got a, a little demonstration of all the drawing mechanics that Max's Marco will learn. Uh, later on in the game, yeah, that's a uh, design choice that you yeah. that you uh, apply for each new power he gets mm -hmm. further on, right? Yes. Yeah, very clever. See how fast that was. I got an achievement. Wow. Dolphins will be so happy about that. <laughs> so we actually have a question from uh, one of our editors who asks, "Hey, devs." Did you consider using Kinect for Marcus' uh, magic powers or puzzles? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, please. Um, uh, we, we did consider it. Um, we chose not to, uh, to put it in there. It, it is a controller-based game, and mm. it was developed as, as such because, I mean, we, uh, we had some experience from the first, from Max and the Magic Marker. And uh, we, we found out that, that controlling a marker was actually pretty cool with the controller. Yep. And especially if you wanted to do the combination of a puzzle game and a platform game where you have to react really fast, yeah. having a, a secondary motion device like a Wiimote or a PS Move controller or whatever just sort of makes that whole thing a bit clunky. Yeah. So, so we actually went for the controller uh, approach 
from the beginning, and, and the, the game has been designed around that yeah. uh, for almost three years. You must yeah. remember that even though that like the Markov course is uh, is like the key game mechanic in the game, uh, what what you do like seventy or eighty percent of the time is actually control Max, yeah. which is a platform character. Yeah, and there it's, it's nice to have like a controller to control him with. Yeah. Um, and we once in a while the game play is pretty tight, uh, where you have to like move Max and draw and move Max again quickly afterwards, and then like doing like transitions between a motion control and a controller is something that is possible. But it was it was a little bit hard compared to that we have developed the whole game with only the controller in mind. Yeah, yeah. I also noticed. Um, I mean, the, the two games are, of course, very different, but in the first game, I oftentimes had a problem with the controls being kind of floaty because you needed to be able to draw whatever you wanted to be. Mm. Whereas in this, I, I really like the, the focus on, on uh, controller controls. Mm -hmm. um, had clearly been, been in your minds when, when designing it, in that the, the pen, for instance, snaps, oftentimes snaps mm. to the things you, you, can, uh, you can activate. I really like that. All right, so what happened now was that Max met, met this uh, old lady and uh, she put her soul into the Maga. And, uh, of course. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi style. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, the very first time you get to use the, the magic of the Maga. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it works like this. I uh, press and hold uh, the R trigger, just like you would uh, wield a weapon in a first person shooter, you can say. And uh, then I uh, just move the Maga around and uh, I move it down to this ink pool. I press A. And then I can uh, draw with the, the, the same stick as I move the mark around with. And uh, in this case, I'll just lift this earth pillar and uh, get rid of the obstacle that was in the way. And then, uh, same mechanic, when I want to delete, I just press X and swipe across what I want to delete. And that's basically all the controls that are in the game. Okay. So it's uh, the control setup is fairly similar. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like uh, you have been a bit more stringent about the, the ways you can use the market this time around, yes. but but also in a more creative way, almost. You can say one of the one of the things that we we have tried to achieve with this is to create like tighter puzzles yeah. that has like more like an, an idea mm. where you sort of have to figure it out, and when you have the right solution, you go aha, and yeah. then it sort of works, uh, or it works. And uh, in uh, in the original Max, there was. Uh, with, well, there wasn't like control over how much ink you had, and and it opened up for some some sort of like brute, brute force your way through yeah. some of the puzzles. Yeah. A, lot that, of, a lot of staircases and uh, yeah. a lot of solutions that were just. Did that uh, did that disappoint you that that people weren't necessarily? Um no, I I don't think it did. It it just it, I mean we knew what the constraints were. Yeah. And, and and we actually uh, whenever we saw somebody do it in a in a in a in a boring way, we also saw people who did it in a fantastic yeah. way. We had like a Japanese guy who did a YouTube video with the whole game where he just he just solves every puzzle in a way we had never thought of. Nice. I mean and that's 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 just fantastic. Um, but, so. but other puzzles in the new game, have you made like specific puzzles with, with the thought or with the idea that, that they should be solvable in several yeah. ways? There are some puzzles in okay. there. You are definitely going to find yeah. puzzles. Um, now you saw the stone the statue that collapsed over here. Uh, you saw there was these creatures inside uh, the, uh, the eye sockets of uh, the, the statue. And uh, these are called uh, uh, we call them evil eyes, and uh, there's like this uh, evil Lord Mustacho who's behind it all, and he has like placed uh, his evil eyes around in the world, and uh, he's like watching you and watching what you're doing, uh, and you want to destroy them. And so they work as, as like collectibles. Yeah. They're his CCTV cameras. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, another question from one of our viewers: uh, Which were your main source of inspiration? The game sure, uh, the game sure brings to mind some uh, adventure movies. That's uh, that been a uh, big source of inspiration. Yeah. Uh, we grew up in the nineties watch watching all the classic adventure movies. Goonies, Indiana Jones, uh, <coughs> and of course, uh, a game like Heart of Darkness has been a yeah. huge inspiration. That was Delphin, right? Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. Some, 
I, I believe he was one of the guys who uh, who also did uh, Another World and Flashback, and he went and made his. Okay. I can remember. That was an awesome game. Um, oh. Yeah, it was a really cool game, and it's still it's still beautiful to look at. Is it's it really low res, but no, it's not. No. It's uh, but it's it's hand painted yeah. backgrounds and okay. fully and yeah, yeah, um, fantastic. And basically, what it has, w w some of the things that we were inspired with with this game from from Heart of Darkness was the uniqueness that that every level was unique, every puzzle was unique, and there's something we've tried to do with this game as well. We sort of said that we didn't want to have like uh, copies of platforms or anything. Mm. We wanted the world to look like be like believable. Yeah. And normally, when you have like a two D platform game, you, uh, you 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 have like platforms that are just like copied around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and we didn't want to to do that here. So everything is sort of like handcrafted, you can say, um, from puzzles to camera angles to the models. Um, you're not gonna find like two platforms that are alike. Um, and that's something we saw in that, that Heart of Darkness also did. And they created this at the same time. Heart of Darkness also created like this uh, um, story, had like a strong story. Yeah. Um, but I at the same time, it was a simple 2D platform game. And um, yeah, and that was that's about the same a thing we boy do. who lost his dog. Or that's his dog, right yeah. 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 But I think yeah, it's to some aliens. Yeah. <laughs> and a cool thing about that game is also you, you start out with a gun. And you think, okay, this is a, like a uh, 2D platform shooter, and it takes like five minutes, and then you lose the gun, <laughs> and it's gone, and you don't. Care. I mean, that's that's. I think that's just fantastic yeah. that you introduce a that weapon, and cool then it right. just loses it, and then from there on, you have to beat the enemies in other ways. But that's also we talked about it before. But it's also something that I find as a as a game designer really appealing about the whole concept that Maxi doesn't have like a machine gun. Yeah. Or <laughs> Or any kind of weapon, but he only has like this marker that can, can of course it's it's quite powerful, but the stuff that it can create are not dangerous in any ways. Uh, and except from the use, fire, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna get a firepower, uh, the ability to draw uh, fireballs later on in the game. But I mean, which which kid have haven't like played with fire, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> but actually, you're more using the firepower for uh, to destroy stuff than to actually kill enemies. Now, this is a good example. I'm trying to get by this, uh, we call it a spike stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a mix between uh, a hedgehog and uh, a snail. And um, this is just a good example. I need to move it, uh, I can either jump over it or I can just uh, lock trap it, it. trap it there. And I can get by. <coughs> uh, we have a lot of users who just want to say hi to you. They think your your oh. game is uh, really Hi. pretty. So <laughs> fit, cool. But is that um, a design choice that you see uh, going forward for for um, future games from you guys? That that you don't necessarily want to uh, make games that that relies heavily on weapon use, or or was it just because it suited this game? I, I think it was, it, it's a really nice thing because it also enabled us to, I mean, it forced us to create puzzles yeah. that were interesting and not just like, just jump on the head of an enemy and then move on. Um, we're not going to rule out doing a game no. of no. guns because maybe we can come up with a cool way we can do yeah. that. But we're not going to do, I mean, we're never going to be a studio that creates games that are just like a repetition of a genre. Okay. I think we're really into trying to come up with new ways of, of creating games and and I mean there will be unique features in all our, our games. Yeah. But I mean we're doing a 2D platform game here and of course we have like a legacy from 2D other 2D platform games and and you are going to if you like playing uh, 2D platformers you're going to feel right at home yeah. with this game. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but 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 still um being able to to appreciate the, all the the unique ideas you have with your puzzles, and I think further on we'll see uh, we'll probably see more of the other powers, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think maybe we should uh, maybe we should skip ahead now. Yeah, so you. Uh, we're just gonna uh, switch to another profile while we can do that. So often you need to do your voodoo magic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
Can you just uh, put on another screenshot? It's just, just take uh, I'm two seconds. Yeah, it's just a couple of seconds. Boom. Oh, we lost that. I think maybe I, think I can good. tell you that's a little bit about what we're doing right now. Right now yeah, we sure. are in the middle of uh, um, downporting the game to uh, 360. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we don't have a release date yet, but but uh, the decision to do yeah, the decision to do uh, Xbox One uh, version came after yeah. the announcement. Actually, of actually, the story is that we finished the 360 uh, last summer. Uh, and uh, and then we decided to bring the game to uh, Xbox One, and uh, we uh, spent uh, five months of uh, improving the game, everything from graphics to games. You said four. Months. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a little bit Short time. You go into it, but it was like a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like in between, between two of to six months. It, it basically. Uh, when you have a period like that, not all of it is, is full production because you have to go to third and you have yeah. to have the game improved. So that's why we are sitting and yeah. talking about different amounts of months. But we went in and we enhanced the game all. And um, then we were done with that and we had released the Xbox One. We were looking at it and we decided that instead of just releasing the 360, we basically wanted to take all the improvements that we had done on the Xbox One and then downscale the game. Wow, okay. So were there those improvements also to the gameplay or were they mainly technical? Uh, or Graphically. Yeah. yeah. I think if you search the internet, you can maybe find some old screenshots and if you do like comparison, you will yeah. see that the, uh, the graphics have been enhanced. Just like, for example, in this level here, if you see the water, uh, it is... Uh, yeah, the water looks much better here than it did in the original game, yeah. but it's going to look as awesome in the 360 yeah. when we are done down porting it. I imagine it must be uh, um, never having developed a game myself before. I imagine it, yeah, it must sorry. be kind of hard to, uh, to, to go from all the glorious power of the Xbox One and having this beautiful game that runs smoothly and having to cram all that into a lesser or uh, a hardware-specific lesser uh, yeah. platform. But but it's, we, we, that's what we're doing right now. On the other yeah, hand, I'd, I'd, I'd like to add, we actually have, uh, like, when you shoot over the goal, you actually create something that's, like, just better. Yeah. And then you have a chance to, 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 of course, you need to cut a few things off, but you still aim higher than you, you did in the first place. Yeah. So, so creating something for a, for a platform that, that not necessarily will run the game at full HD, for example, is, is not a bad idea at all. Okay, just, just wait here, now I want to talk about the game. <laughs> Sorry, oh, the game! <laughs> the game! Oh, wow! That's, that's what, we are. what about uh, it? Basically, what uh, Les is drawing here is uh, a branch. And um, you saw us playing in, uh, there are seven chapters in the game. Mm. The first one takes place in uh, a world we call Waste, uh, in a, yeah, a chapter we call the Wasteland, uh, which is like this desert thing, desert area. And then you get to a forest, and in the forest, you uh, you will learn the, the marker will learn or get the power to draw branches. Mm. And that's what Les is, is drawing here. And basically, you can you can use uh, branches to to jump on. You can use them as a springboard. Uh, you can uh, draw uh, boxes with it. You can move them around. You can push it. You can climb up and down of it. Um, and um, in this level here, we came. This is a, a level called uh, the Sacred Pool. Uh, and it, it takes place in a, a sort of like a, a marshland area. And uh, here the branch uh, can float on water. Oh. Um, and you can see here, uh -oh. Max can sail on it then. And there are some poisonous dangerous, one. poisonous uh, sponges. Um, in the forest world, Max has, has also learned the uh, power to draw, uh, or the Marga has learned the power to draw vines. Um, what chapter is this? This is uh, four. halfway through the game. Okay. Uh, chapter four. Uh, chapter four. Um, and again, at this point, you can draw branches, vines, and earth pillars. Yeah, the, the whole uh, vibe has certainly changed from uh, the levels yeah. we saw before, right? In many ways, you can say like the, the whole journey is, is very traditional in like a like a lot of the rings traditional yeah. way sort of the, the game is light in the beginning and then it becomes darker and darker and darker as you get closer to the to uh, the evil lord mustachio's uh, castle where Felix is being uh, kept uh, 
It's so awesome that, that you see like darkness and, and there's a certain mood here and you fight a guy called Lord Mustachio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's a, it has a light tone to it, ah. of yeah, course. Yeah, well, it, it, but it, it's still pretty brutal. Um, so, so, of course, we want to have a, like a humoristic yeah. approach to the whole story. Yeah, and it also fits what you talked about before, having the, the differences between, you know, the two sides. Yeah. So. Whenever Max's marker is about to uh, get a new power, we have like a level that is completely focused on uh, the new power. Mm. And um, what just happened was that Max's marker flew away from him <coughs> and it flew to this uh, sacred place where it will get the power. And then the power is uh, guiding you towards where the marker is. Uh, and at the same time, you're seeing what the power can do. And uh, now you're about to get the water power. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually a giant octopus, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a giant octopus, yeah. It's a beautiful game. Thanks. Thank you. And there is the marker, and uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Trademark. Yeah, TM. Yeah. And this is the only tutorial we have in the game. Mm. In, Every in time the you get the power, it's, it's hints what you have to yeah. do the first time. Basically, we have tried to, we made a clear decision that we didn't want to give uh, we wanted to give as little help as possible yep. to the players. We want them to discover the power themselves. We want them to learn how the mechanics work. And that's sort of like part of the puzzling in the game, that you discover this yourself. Yeah. Um, so so n basically what you just saw there was the tutorial that we're going to give you Yeah. Uh, in regards of the water power. Uh, what we are doing then is we're creating a series of puzzles that are slowly showing you the different ways you can use the mechanic. Uh, for example, here you can, before you just saw that it, the water will carry Max and prevent him from, from dying from a long fall. Here you can see he can uh, get over a gap where he couldn't jump as far as that. Um, then you, here you learn uh, another mechanic, this is a puzzle. Some, to some. A lot of people do like this and then they have a problem. <laughs> and then they do because like they're stuck. They're, they're stuck there. Uh, so what you so need, that's not what really want to need to do is uh, die. <laughs> you die a lot. <laughs> you die yes, a lot. We're I really forgiving it. with the checkpoint system. Uh, and then you can do it like ah. that. So it's very important to, for us to teach people that they can they can control the marker completely freely. Yeah. And uh, of course that, I mean, it means that you can solve the puzzles in different ways. But it's also I mean, with, within the constraints. Yeah, uh, about the tutorials, I noticed uh, it might just be the game that took pity on me, but I noticed there was a certain puzzle that I just couldn't figure out. And Max himself started to give like pointers. Yeah. There are, I think we, we do it like twice. Uh, I mean, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe a little, very, very few times yeah. we do that. And it's when we have, we spend a lot of time testing the game. And some, sometimes we have encountered there were like puzzles that were too early in the game, too yeah. difficult. And then we said, okay, then let's, let's give a little hint. Okay. Um, but we really liked the puzzle so much that we didn't want to remove them. Yeah, and in this case here, you saw that, you, you, or you learn that water can also carry other things than just max. You could lift a, a huge uh, rock with mm. the water power. Throughout the game, Maxi will end up in this situation where he's like near death, and the camera will slow down, go into slow motion, and then you have to like think fast, draw fast. Yeah. Um, kind of uh, bullet time. -ish. It's a kind of bullet time, and it gives us this uh, chance to do uh, like these great action moments. Of course. Where we can also play with the camera and yeah, and do stuff like that. A bunch yeah. of uh, enemies in the walls here. So these guys you want to avoid, just to set it up a little bit. So if I get too close to them, they'll eat me. So I sort of have to figure out how to draw these things in a way that will take me all the way up here without <laughs> getting eaten. Maybe I'll die now. There's someone oh, uh, good, good here start. who's asking a question, and uh, before I ask that, he's also asking, 
Is your company looking for interns by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking for talented people, so yeah. please drop an email if if you have anything to, to that offer. goes out to the viewer, Anas. I will try to condense his question because he has written almost a full page. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, here the problem is you, you want to get up to the to the corner up there where you can see there's like a, a small tunnel opening. Um, the problem is that uh, you cannot just use the water power to shoot over there. You cannot reach, you cannot shoot max to high enough. So you have to first grab the vine. Oh, I can't get it. Like that. And then if you, you can't do that. So, but the smart thing is if you have to delete the water first. Basically what we're teaching the player here is that the sequence that he draws stuff is in is important. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, that was close. Come there on. you go. So if you crawl up to the top of the vine, then draw the water. Draw a little bit more upwards, like that, and then you delete, erase the vine. Of course. And then Is you're gonna fall into it, and, and you'll fly. I normally solve it in another way, but yeah, <laughs> it's a good example of that. Multiple <laughs> solutions to solve that. There it is. Um. So now it started raining. And Max has, a, I think he has a comment about, oh no, I think that's the next level. He gets drenched. So we sort of create a, a low point of his journey here, where he's just wet and there's no, like Max is nowhere to be seen. And he's just come out of a cave where this old lady that helps him along has been unable to help him. So he's, this is, oh, not so far enough. So it's the dark point of his journey. This is the dark point. And uh, the old lady tries to cheer her along. In this case, I need to get the, the branch all the way over to where Max can jump onto it and then get rid of the water and get up there. Can, can you go into what, uh, what, what, how do you come up with these puzzles and, and how do you balance them? How do you make them more and more uh, challenging without totally, you know, stumbling uh, the player? It has been like a huge, uh, you can say, there's been a lot of work. Yeah. A actually, the game has been uh, twice as long as it ended up being, okay. because we just did so many puzzles. Yeah. We have been uh, two to four level designers, two, for two level designers from the beginning, and at one point we were four, mm. uh, sitting and uh, bouncing puzzles uh, off each other, and sort of ping-ponging between us, and coming up with great puzzles, and then, um, at one point, we just went into the game and we said we need to go in and trim it down. Yeah. Only take the best ones, and uh, we also had like the philosophy that we didn't want to uh, repeat any puzzles. So there should be like some uniqueness to every puzzle that we have in the game. Yeah. Do you that's also um, that's that's really good to hear because you see uh, a lot of developers that that definitely go for the artificial way of of. Lengthening yeah. their game by just reusing and reusing and reusing. Yeah, but we actually did it the other, the other way, way around. around. Yeah, created way too much yeah. content and then cut yeah. it down. That's but actually we still. That's uh, the expensive way. That's <laughs> the expensive way. You, you call the expensive way. I call the the nice way of doing. Yeah. <laughs> but we still. I mean, the game will still take between six to eight hours to complete yeah. for an average gamer. Okay. Uh, depending on if you go searching for collectibles and. Uh, want to collect all the achievements and stuff like that, you can probably put in 10 hours to it. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, spoiling anything that, that uh, there's also a collectible besides the eyes yeah. that you showed us. There's like no, a I medallion or something? Yeah, there's a medallion. Yeah. In every level there's like one unique uh, secret uh, secret piece that is really hard to get. Yeah. And uh, you have to collect all of them. And, then, uh, and does you don't need to say what, but does it unlock anything or...? Um, in the On the 360, 360 does? you're gonna get some, <laughs> okay. uh, you'll get a, what's called an avatar award. Ah, nice. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, platform games usually, like, find their way to the most, like, hardcore of, of the collectible players, right? Who, uh, who just they wants do. to get but every yeah, star, mean, every coin, every little thing. Definitely. It was kind of interesting. We could see that, that I, I think it took two days 
after we uh, released the game on Xbox One. And then there was uh, somebody who already had like really? a thousand in game as well. Wow. Mm. So, uh, he did well and he was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like saying, this is the first time I'm the first one. Uh, nice. Uh, nice, nice. So, yeah, it's uh, really nice to follow people playing the game on <laughs> Twitter or whatever, um, and, and get feedback directly. I think that's a very fairly new thing that you get so uh, much feedback just like th immediately yeah. once it's released you get people saying oh we love this uh, and they they reach out to you in a way that i'm sure that game developers haven't seen like uh, yeah, five so years ago I, I just want to say to the to the watchers out there that i mean just continue doing that we are watching <coughs> it we're seeing we're reading what you're writing in in forums and comments and it's something we definitely use yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and i guess uh, twitter makes that even even more approachable for a developer like you right because that's it's so direct yeah, yeah it yeah. is and uh, yeah and people post screenshots and now the xbox one has a lot of features where people can easily like get videos out and screenshots and stuff like uh, that. Have you started to check that out? Like uh, yeah, yeah. people coming up with different solutions for different puzzles and stuff Definitely. like that? Definitely. Wow, that's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what do we see next? Uh, we have a low as in chapter five. Uh, now you're getting really close to the Mustachio's castle. You're really close to uh, saving your little brother. Uh, this is sort of like a back entrance into the castle, ah. uh, which it goes through these uh, lava caves, um, and Maxi is uh, about to enter them when the level starts here. Um, there's. This goes out to the viewer, Anas. Uh, your question was really long. It's like three questions in one. So if you wanted to ask, you need to condense it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Sorry, Anas. Uh, meanwhile, there's uh, another user called Elkart who's asking the obvious question. It's probably too early for you guys to answer it, but uh, will we see a Max 3? Any new ideas for the magic marker? <clears throat> I think I, it's too it's early. It's <laughs> the user asking <laughs> this. I, 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 uh, I, I think it's too early for us to go into details about a sequel. Uh, we are still sitting and working on the, the, the 360. 360. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I need to focus on this. You failed right. twice? <laughs> yeah. You can't talk and play? No. <laughs> on the way here, Mikkel said, I can easily talk and play. <laughs> I lied. You lied completely. We should have made No, but game. we'd love to do another Max game, of course, but it's not, there's nothing concrete. No, um, but, but I think he also meant that uh, with new ideas for the Magic Marker, I guess that's something that, that always sits in the back of your mind, right? Well, designing a game and, and finishing it, you probably come up with even more clever yeah, yeah, ways. Definitely, and we also, uh, <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of puzzles that we that we did our, our sequences of gameplay that, that never made it into the game. That must be really hard. So, so we have stuff. a lot of stuff that is that is uh, that is, is great, and and there's like definitely with the mechanics there are potential to do more. Yeah, uh, that's hundred percent sure. So did you have a fist fight at the office to to sort out which puzzles? Yes, yes, yeah. we did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's like it's like a. Uh, it's always hard when you have to kill your darlings. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, I think that. None, nobody at the office regrets whenever we cut something because okay. it just made the game better yeah. and the flow better. Mm. So it was not like, we had like some well, there was, I really like that puzzle, but it's okay, it's gone because it's better now. Yeah. Actually, we have cut like, there was like, been like three complete Multiple. levels yeah. that we just cut. That, that were finished? That or were finished. Oh, man. Three okay. full levels. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we so live in a world full of DLC, right? Yeah, so. but, uh, yeah but uh, in a game like this, I don't, I, don't, I don't think people should expect that much DLC. Okay. No. Because the story is, uh, is a linear one. Yeah. This, it's going to be really hard to fit in, like, oh. a side story. <laughs> because this isn't actually what happened. Like this is what yeah. happened. <laughs> and, uh, remember when Max was <laughs> jumping over that gap? What he was actually doing was, <laughs> meanwhile, you just sorted it out, man. Yeah. DLC coming. <laughs> I just want to show you this puzzle here. Uh, the problem in this puzzle, it's one of the harder puzzles in the game. Uh, the problem is that I have this branch. I need to get down here where the marker is. Uh, I can't just jump down there. Uh, I have the, the vine here. But I can't really get it down there. So my question is, do you have any ideas? 
I, I'm just, no, not no. at all. I mean, uh, um, no, but the problem is I have this vine here, and I really want to uh, to use that for something, but I can't really. You can make it stick to the vine. No, but it's I can. Basically, one of the mechanics uh, that I think don't think we have shown that is that that vines can be drawn towards a branch, and then will stick to the branch. Again, the problem is that I cannot really. It is I can't draw the vine uh, far enough. And we we probably should but say that that uh, compared to the first game, you you can't pick up more ink. The ink no. is, is defined, right? No, or the amount true. of ink. That's true. Basically, when 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 you see I move the marker over an ink pool, you can see this uh, circle that appears. That shows you how far you can draw at any mm. given point. So you, if you follow, the, you will see that it yep. moves in, and then you can see it. So uh, when I'm drawn, drawing, I can't draw anymore. Um, so now what I have to do is I have to shape the branch. I'm going to shape it like a, with angle here. Then Max can push it over the side here. Whoops. And then I then I can reach the vine. Mm, nice. I'm going to cut the vine here. And I'm gonna do something that uh, is very dangerous. Whoops! I don't mean that's it. yeah. And it shows how how like simple the puzzles can be and still be really hard. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's not that many ingredients involved. It's just the physics and uh, two two of these puzzles. And I, I like guess you could spend a lot of time sitting and yeah, the, coming the, up with a solution for that puzzle. The, the, the game it. really has a way of of uh, making a lot of. The puzzle, uh, the puzzles in, in the game like seem impossible when you just look at them. Yeah. But uh, but as soon as you start to experiment, you go like, oh yeah, that can roll, or I can draw a box here that yeah. I, I can stand. On. And, and that's really something we wanted. We wanted to give people that the feeling that they look at something and say, oh, this is impossible. And then when they start playing with it, they ah, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. And then they get like this. Uh, this, yeah, it's just a really nice feeling to solve a puzzle that you thought was impossible yeah, or very well, difficult. One of the, the puzzles I, uh, I was stuck on, um, Max actually hinted that I could just draw a wheel. Yeah. And I never thought of that. No. Um, so. But that is one of, it's a good example of one of the puzzles where we're giving a hint. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I'm just glad that was just me. That was completely <laughs> useless <laughs> at the game. So. Yeah. Okay, um, throughout the game we have uh, a lot of creatures in the game that are enemies that Maxwell encounter. And uh, this one is uh, an example of, uh, uh, we call it a lever creature. And uh, of course, the, they have some kind of functionality together with the powers uh, of the marker. And uh, in this case, I can uh, draw water on it and it uh, will uh, petrify and turn into like a rock. Um, now, Max cannot jump this far, but I can just push it. And, uh, Jump on top of it, 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 oh, it turns back to lava. So I have to be fast. Uh, now I'm just gonna wait until it moves into the center of the lava pool here, and then I'm just gonna do it like this. And then I need the water to get up here, like that. And again, we sh probably should say this is one of the later levels, right? This is one of the later levels, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a user here asking, can you control all elements like fire, water, earth, and wind in this game? There's no wind. There's no wind. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. But uh, yeah, of course we've been inspired by the idea of elements. Yep. And, and uh, uh, that's also why the, the, the good uh, spirit in the beginning, the old lady is sort of like this hippie, yin yang kind of woman um, and, and she has control over all the, the peaceful elements whereas the evil Lord Mustachio is of course just the bad guy who's, uh, who's just destructive yeah. in his way of being. But branches and vines are not elements either. They're not elements but they just make a good game. Tree elements. Yeah, that's more important. <laughs> Screw the concept. Hint at the concept. Okay, yeah, yeah, one game. of the problem in this puzzle here is that if uh, I draw a water stream, uh, the lever will actually uh, destroy it. So uh, instead of uh, just drawing it and then jumping into it, I'll actually uh, be standing inside it as I draw it. Whoa. Just made it. I'm just going to say to all the viewers out there, uh, we have 
approximately 15 minutes left with uh, the guys from uh, Press Play. So if you have any questions, make sure to um, to ask them within the next 15 minutes. Because if not, uh, it will just be Nick and I coming up with like random answers <laughs> to your questions, <laughs> and it would not be nearly as exciting. So make sure to have your questions ready. Again, I want to go over here, and again, I have the same problem that I. It's not just a matter of draw, do my drawings. I also need to time it. So, whoops. A lot of the the things we try to do in the game is also to give you like these, uh, this feeling of oh, barely made it. Mm. Uh, uh, what engine are you using for this game? Unity. That's the f same you used in the first one, right? It is. Actually, uh, we tend to use Unity for all our games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any reason in particular? <coughs> it's uh, very easy to access for all uh, parts of, of the team. So uh, we have a... Of course, I mean, that's that's where we started. Yeah. By coincidence, I guess. Um, so so it has a lot of, of, of really cool features that makes it very accessible. And it makes it easy for even for the... Um, level designers and artists to to chip in and, and design the game without having to bug all the coders yeah. all the time. Um, and it so seems like, uh, and again, I don't know, I'm just thinking, uh, seeing what's, what's happening with the engine, but it seems like it's an engine that's always improving. I mean, the, the, yeah. the stuff you see out of the guys that's, that's doing the engine seems amazing. Yeah, they, they're working really hard on yeah. it, uh, yeah. doing a really good job. And uh, I think also when we started out, we were we were going from making flash games mm. to uh, to to doing uh, console games, yeah. and we we had a like a pretty easy transition from from flash to Unity. So that's uh, that's also part of the reason, yeah. I guess. And they're based in Copenhagen as well, or they used to be. Now I think they actually most which is of kind Unity of amazing. Is in, right? in, they still in have like a huge department. Yeah, in, yeah they in, do in Copenhagen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's a Danish company. Yeah. They're doing really good stuff. As they well. are. Yeah. It's, it's a, and it's it's. I mean, it's free to just download and and start working with the, with the free version of it. Yeah. And you can actually do quite a lot to get into it. So. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it, it, it seems I think like it's like a it's a an indie darling development. Tool. I was I was gonna say it seems like it has gotten really good traction with the, with just people who want to try to to yeah. see what it is to develop a game and yeah. Yeah. and not really bother with the code. They're not gonna like have a lot of success without code, though. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no. But, but having to program the engine from from scratch. That's true. Yeah. That is yeah. true. Yeah. And actually, I can say that that I mean, Max, we were only the game director, Mikkel Torster. He was also programming a lot on the game. Okay. Doing a lot of programming, and and he was the only programmer we had in the in the in, yeah, can I say like the first half year of the yep. production of the game. So. Um, and that has that would never have been possible if we weren't using Unity. How, how many uh, people were you when you were developing the first Max game, and how many for the sequel? Uh, the first Max game, at its highest, we were around six, seven people, and most of the time we were two or three. Okay. So and, and for the sequel? I think maybe we, when we started out, we were maybe eight. Eight people or something yeah. like that, and when scaled we were up. scaled up to maybe fifteen. So it's it's still like fairly small. Yeah, fairly yeah, small. Fairly small, small. Without insulting you. <laughs> no, no, no. But the good thing about being a small team is that we are also very uh, say agile. We can yeah. easily make decisions, and uh, yeah, we because we are just we so few people, so we can just make the decisions. Yeah, and yeah. it seems like it's it's really important for you guys to to be able to uh, really. Um, Make creative games that yeah. try a lot of, of s the stuff that you really want to see. Yeah. Games, right? Yeah, yeah. We we do games that we would like to play ourselves. Yeah, that's like a design philosophy. Okay. So we try f to come up with games that we'd love to play. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anything uh, else you want to show? Yeah, us? I just want to show you. I have a last puzzle here. Uh, just drawing a line here, getting down here. Um, in this case here, you see I have this rock, and I have this, uh, this wall here. This, there's no way out of this room, so I should probably try to destroy this wall. Um, 
And uh, what I can do is I can move the rock over here, lift this uh, earth pillar, then lift the rock. Then if I attach the vine to the rock and erase the earth pillar, I will make my own little, uh, I don't know what's called, like a wrecking like like ball, <laughs> the illusion ball. Um, Must be really fun to come up with stuff like that. And, and actually see it work in game, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. This is. Uh, I'm gonna stop playing now. But this is like one of the bosses in the game. But uh, yeah. it looks really nice. I'm not gonna show anymore. Is there another level you want to uh, to show before uh, you leave? Uh, Sounds like I'm forcing you out here. Yeah, <laughs> I should say no. that, that you actually made a point that, that, that you had. I just don't think I want to spoil more of the game, but uh, do you have any? No. We could, I don't know. No. I, I mean, no. I think the rest of the game should be up to, uh, to the viewers themselves to explore. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. Also, yeah. we, we tend to like speed run the, ga the game when mm. we show it and uh, showing too much. Like just showing solutions after each other can become. Yeah, I I, I really uh, like before where you said yeah this is actually one of the harder puzzles in the game. And then you just <laughs> I used like ten minutes on one of the puzzles yeah. and that was like in level two or something yeah. like that. So yeah. um, exactly, and that's like that's yeah that's the uh, that's the challenge of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, difficulty wise, I I when I started out the game, I mean the intro itself. Uh, almost makes it seems like it's a really kid-friendly game, and within like the first level, maybe the second level or so, you're already introduced to to puzzles that will actually challenge the way you, you play the game. But but when we see the the like kids that are around ten years old playing the game, they always like they played like they were born with the controller in the hand. Yeah, um, I, I, I imagine some of us might actually be kind of like indoctrinated with a certain way of playing a game and, and when, you, when you have to get creative freedom you have in this game it actually makes it kind of harder. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I mean, true. Uh, we definitely see that, uh, that, that kids and younger people ha uh, very, uh, have an easy time with the game. Okay. Yeah. We have had a lot and of interns going, oh, it's really cool, but it's too easy. <laughs> uh. And that's, I, when we talk to people our age, they go, oh, it's, that's a really hard game. So, uh, yeah, we've uh. tried to, 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 to strike that balance between uh, find the right difficulty of the game to uh, appeal to as many players as possible. Well, we should maybe add to like the kid-friendly thing that the game has a rating at around 10 years. Okay. 20, 10, 12 years, depending on which region you are in. Yeah. Um, so that sort of sets like <coughs> a, yeah. a, a limit, a lower limit. Yeah. yeah. Though I will say that my daughter, uh, at six years <laughs> old, she's, uh, she's played it. halfway through the game without any help, so... Okay. Yeah, so that's also impossible. As yeah. long as the parents supervise it, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, I believe that's it the is, political correct uh, I think it's correct correct <laughs> mind, mind <laughs> fantasy violence. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Maxi will die in the game, and uh, some of the death will also be, uh, what can you say? I mean, basically, we think when you when you die, he's not just like going up in a in a puff of smoke. He is he is dying, yeah. and uh, it it should hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there should so, there uh, should be some punishment. There should be some punishment. In Definitely. Yeah. So uh, again, the game is out right now for Xbox One, right? Yeah. Yeah. And is there in the regions in the regions where the Xbox One is out? Yes. And Except from Germany. Except Sorry, from Germany. Germany. And we yeah. don't talk anything about importing Xbox Ones. We don't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> nothing. But if you do, then... Uh, then buy then, the game. Then, then buy Max. Then yeah. go down and, uh, Max. and the 360 version, is there a release date for that yet? Not yet. Not a date, okay. but we're working really hard on, on getting it out. And it's, it's really close. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I'll let you guys go. Again, it seems like I'm being really rude. It's, <laughs> it's not... We actually discussed this. Uh, but uh, thanks a lot for, for coming by. And again, Congratulations yeah, on the game. It was a pleasure. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Bye. <coughs> uh, Leslie should be putting on some video right now, but we will be back in two minutes or so.
other brother Brother, brother, oh brother of mine, I wish you could be erased from all of time. That evil itself could take you away and leave me alone on this very day. You think your brother will save you? <laughs> Hey, you thought you could get rid of me, <laughs> but I'm back. So And so am I. Yes. So uh, I made this little game yeah. that I'd like uh, Thomas to play. Yeah, the, the two other guys we just yeah, I don't know who just, they were. I mean, it's all Nick. GRTV. So I'll tell you something about how I made these puzzles. Yeah. Um, I don't know if uh, the guys behind the, the screen are ready, but we could show some, uh, some of the concept pictures that we got yes. from the developers. Yes, um, who is that? So yeah, for, for people just joining now, just like me, I've been watching a little bit. We of course just had the developers uh, of the game, Max, Chris and the Brother. Two of the developers, yeah. we should say. Uh, so if you missed that, go back and watch the video later tonight when it's up. Uh, but now we'll take a look at some nice footage that they gave us and we'll play a little bit more of the game. Yeah, I think uh, after watching the footage we got, um, we might go back to the start of the game and just yes. play the first couple of levels. Um, good. And again, uh, for those of you who followed the, the previous uh, footage and interview, the guys were really badass at the game. They certainly know the, the, knew the puzzles, it was very clear to see. And uh, I already in the first couple of levels have struggled considerably more than they did. Okay. So uh, just saying. Nice. Looking forward to that. Putting it out there. There it is. Guys, um, are we ready with some uh, some video, or should we play first? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's take a look at the uh, at the nice video that they brought us. Okay. This is some uh, some concept art. Yeah. That they provided. Uh, so you see in the middle, that was one of the characters that they, they talked about before in the stream. Yeah, that's. That you see in the beginning, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, but it seems to be the main villain, or yeah. not the bad, bad guy, but his like uh, henchman, his main henchman, yeah. who uh, pretty much hunts you throughout the whole game. And as you see in the, in the corner up there, we see the main character Max for scale, so you can see how big the character is. And then on, on the left, you see some, uh, some references, what they have been inspired by for this character. So you see, See the one and only James Hetfield yep. from Metallica and some uh, some Wookiees uh, <laughs> from the Star Wars universe. 
Um, it might just be because I, uh, you told me uh, yeah. of the references beforehand, but ever since then, I've just started to see James Hetfield in the monster yeah. every <laughs> yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. It's pretty awesome. That's Max's little brother, seems like. Yeah, uh, he's the one who's get kidnapped at the start of the game. Okay. That you have to, uh, to rescue. Felix is his name. And who are these guys? These are, as it says, just uh, henchmen. Okay. They are, uh, like, comically evil in that they will bash you yeah. totally, but uh, not really that clever. Um, so uh, you actually hear Max, like, comment on the low intelligence a couple of times. Um, but, uh, yeah. And again, you see Max for, for scale. Yeah. Seems like some concept art from one of the late lava levels. boss up in, <laughs> yeah. in the corner. So I guess this is a boss we. Yeah, that was probably the boss we just uh, saw a glimpse of uh, before uh, we ended the gameplay beforehand. Um, apparently, one of the end bosses of the game. It seemed like uh, it was pretty close to uh, to the end of the game. And this <laughs> awesome is the main name. villain, <laughs> Mustacho. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Yeah, as, as as they spoke about before, um, they've tried to go without putting words in their mouth. Uh, they've they tried to go um, like for the comically evil, but but really like two sides. Like it can actually be a bit serious, but it's still comically. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so, and I think he certainly reflects that, yeah. and also in his name, right? Yeah. So, again. Spikesta? Yeah, one of the creatures that you will... Um, I love seeing like the different levels of... Uh of the art. Yeah, and also also it's really cool that they have the, the scale of max compared yeah. to the enemies. Yeah, that's really nice to see in the, yeah. this sort of stuff. But I guess it's smart. This is this is not just something they have drilled up for us. <laughs> this is, of course, something they use. So I'm sure that they have it so they know when they're designing the game how big things are. We shouldn't be telling that. No, it shouldn't, shouldn't I? Okay, then can we, can we rewind this yeah. game? And then this is something <laughs> they made specifically for us yeah, and put I made into this, the game. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, level. Yeah, the level. I think we should probably go into the gameplay, or was yeah, there anything? Yeah, if we have, uh, I, actually, because we're going to start the, the beginning of the game now, yeah. right? I think we should play. We have three videos. Oh, we have, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, that is actually the beginning of the of the game we see now. Yeah, it's, here it's the intro. In, yeah, and this is so. This is like the first stage of them making the intro. Yeah, this is probably pretty close to uh, to storyboard. Yeah. Um, so this is how the they make it first, which is like is a moving drawing. Yeah. Uh, very simple. Um, this would be a pretty nice storyboard, I think. Uh, as you actually get to see motion and, and movements and Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if it will be be in the, in this version, but uh, it probably won't. What I really like about um, the original well, as you can see here it says Google and you'll see later that yeah, it says, it says Giggle. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you actually see uh, the little brother, Felix, just <laughs> smash the toys yeah, and you yeah. see them cracking more and so more. So it's still very simple uh, yeah. movements here. This, this I think, is what, you know, we've seen big production companies who make. We've seen it with Lord of the Rings with Peter Jackson and Joe Lucas with Star Wars. They made these and, and called them previous. And uh, it's they tend to do it on, on bigger, more action films yeah. where, where you need to see there's so much stuff happening that you need to show how, how things move around in, in these shots. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think today their previouses look more like this yeah. uh, previous visualization. Yeah. It's a little more advanced. Uh, yeah, we see uh, it's actually a rendering now, or a 3D model, yeah. I should say. Um, oh, he's still moving a little bit. You know, <laughs> It's not the final version. No, but, no, no, no. But you get more of a sense of, of how it's going to look. Here might actually see the destruction, or oh, maybe not. My God, he's sitting still. So yeah. annoying. But it, like it is really cool to have this sort of uh, product to to see. Yeah, and I just uh, I like that, that already here you see the exaggerated, uh, um, like facials of yeah. Max and everything. It's very cartoon-like. So 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 nice that there's like just a place on the net that you can look up for like secret yeah, magic yeah. formulas. And of course it didn't say Google, it said it was with two G's instead of two O's, yeah. so I guess it's Google. Google. Yeah. But then they, you'll see they changed that in the final version. Um, yeah, the final version we really should probably just uh, run in-game, maybe? Uh, let's see if they run it automatically. Uh, oh, let's yeah. just see. Okay. 
So this should be the final version. We will see if there, if anybody can spot if there is a difference. This should be the final version. Um, nice house, all like bendy. And see, there's so much detail here. Pictures moving, shadows and light. And yeah, well, this is the full rendering. Yeah, yeah. So. so, so even though it's a simple animated game in that in that look, there is a lot of, of things going on. Yeah, and then. Uh, it's probably because uh, some people really don't think about it. Like seeing mm -hmm. a 2D game that's not very advanced, that can't be that hard to do. I mean, the amount of work that, that this team has clearly put into the game. They talked about, what, three years of development time? Yeah. But I think it's also peop some people don't think of that, oh, there's actually, you know, shades and all this stuff in it. Uh, they, and that's uh, m maybe that's, you know, one of the things you need to be good at to make something the style. You need to make it look simple in a way. Mm. But it's actually, it can be very advanced. There's also see like out the window and like there's there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. When we have like a specific art style. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, if people had have the 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 All option right. to do so. Oh. oh yeah, this is. Uh, Did you show that already? No, no. I okay. Shown this. Can you tell us what it is? Uh, I actually haven't watched it myself, but it's a video of of, uh, of the guys behind the scenes making the the game. But maybe we should listen to it if there's sound I on for them. There's, there's no, no sound. sound. Okay, no. so uh, this is just a shot of. So uh, when we studio. talked to the to the guys about them coming in to show the game, we we talked to them about what uh, did they have something that would be fun to to see, and they so they gave us this these videos and, and artwork to to show uh, how it was making it. So. Uh, so this is very special behind the scenes footage where we see them uh, see them work on the game. Yeah. Um, in their Danish studio. Yeah, I was going to say they are uh, located here in Copenhagen and uh, really doing good stuff. After the first game, actually it was not the first Max game. I believe it was after the first Max game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the company first play got bought by uh, Microsoft. So uh, that's pretty impressive. So that is why the game is out for yes. Xbox uh, I would 360, think so. or will be out for 360 and Xbox One, and not for for the consoles. Yeah. Okay. So should we get into the game? Yeah, if let's do that. You can yes. switch back, guys. So. Okay. Uh, we played the prologue, prologue before. Oh, I'm missing. So I think we'll start in uh, Black Rock Canyon. Well, you're the yep. you're the expert now. Well, we'll see. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the view, and the coke. Calling myself an expert in this game is yeah. probably. I just want to set you up real high, so <laughs> so I'm sure you're gonna fail. <laughs> Expectation. And what do you think of the controls? Because it's it can be really hard to tell uh, how easy it is to do. You know, you get the pen out and all that stuff. Does, does that feel natural? You definitely have to 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 get used to that. The pen will just as soon as I yeah. press the button, it will be there. Will be, and it kind of zooms out. But but does it make a sound, or do you, do we need you to do the? It actually makes the sound. Okay. But my sound is way cooler. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but but um, as I was uh, talking to them about. Um, They've clearly thought a whole lot about how to implement the whole uh, magic marker in the game. In that, for instance, as soon as I get close to something, it kind of snaps to it. Yeah. So I don't have to like uh, perfectly uh, align it here. And also you see the whole like visual aura. Oh, of yeah, how far you could draw. Of how yeah. far you can draw. So I can already before... That's, that's really nice, actually. That's yeah, a nice thought. already before starting to draw, I yeah, have you know, an approximate yeah. idea of what I'm uh, able to do. And it's really fun, this whole, like, now we've had the devs here, and th they can tell you some things that maybe we don't think about. Uh, I think it's always fun. I, I have the same thing when I play, and you talk to people who play, where they're like, why didn't they think of this, and why didn't they do that? And generally they did. Yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe something didn't work out. Maybe it wasn't, wasn't as good as you think it would be, or yeah. maybe they didn't have money to develop it. Or they, There tend to be a lot of thoughts behind the things they do because it is, you know, a lot of work and it takes a long time, a lot of money. And but I mean, it, it's it, in, in gaming, it's the same as in sports. There's yeah. always armchair experts, right? Yeah. Uh, myself yeah. included. I will oftentimes sit and go like, come on, yeah, I yeah. should have thought of, thought of that. And if you talk to them, 
They did. They already <laughs> did, yeah. and there's like ten reasons why it couldn't be so. And you could you could say, I mean, you can't as, a, as when I'm sitting and playing a game, if it annoys me, then it doesn't help me that they thought of it. But uh, and it's okay that you don't like a game or that you don't think it works the way it is. But just know that generally it's not because they didn't think of it. No, but but uh, as it regards to to this game, I'm actually I mean, there's been way more of the, the ideas where I go like, ah, yeah, that's really yeah. clever, instead of me saying, why didn't you do it like this, and this is stupid. So uh, I've been really impressed with the control so far. Um, pretty tight. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it got so, stuck in between. No, <laughs> it's actually, uh, okay, so I will just die here, so that you can see this. So this enemy, I can't uh, progress um, unless I trick it. Progress past, I should say. Okay. So you played this already? Yes, I played this. Do you need it to walk onto the pillar? Uh, I can stand on the pillar and actually raise it while I'm standing on it. Yeah, but what is it you need the, the thing to do? Yeah, wait for it. <laughs> wait for it. It would be so funny if I actually forgot what it is I'm supposed yeah. to do right now. I wouldn't be surprised. No, me neither. I, oh yeah, no, no. Okay, so... It's not the most clever of enemies, this one. So hopefully... Yes. Oh, and it needs to get eaten? Yes. Or... Like that. It ah, actually turns okay. into a platform. Okay, that's sneaky. Yeah, it's quite clever. But again, um, the whole puzzle, uh, I mean, especially in these sorts of games, you often hear people talk about puzzles and uh, and sometimes it doesn't really amount to anything more than you picking up like yeah. a key in a certain position or something like that. And in this game, the puzzles really does uh, or do feel like um, something that has been um, primary focus for for, uh, for the developers. This is also quite clever, actually. Have you, by the way, have you noticed how Max is a ginger? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to point out, Nick? I just want to say it's not a coincidence that I, uh, in like a, uh, no, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> no, so I like to refer to him as the ginger ninja as well. Yeah. Uh, down here we have like this huge boulder. Okay. And we can lift it up. Actually, we can't. <laughs> we do <laughs> That. Whoopty. Oh, roll down. Is, ah, okay. Yeah, that's but nice. I still need to do this. Ba boom. Bullseye. Clever. Would you be manning the iPad? I I would be manning the iPad. You would be. Well, there's games on here. <laughs> <laughs> this makes for a. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, do you thing. want me to take a look at the chat, or do you just want me to... Whatever you want. But did you just know that this is getting kind of boring? <laughs> and <you're> like, do <laughs> <laughs> I should, probably should have said uh, IRC. Yeah. But uh, having uh, developers in studio... Yeah, is it's uh, better than me. Or what? Didn't say that, Nick, but yes, it is. Of course, I am a developer myself. Uh, uh, of I this game. That, yeah. yeah, no, um, but uh, no, what I wanted to say is that uh, it's, it's definitely something we uh, we hope to do more. Yeah, we will do more. Yeah. Um, I can say for the people who were looking forward to our stream yesterday, where we weren't supposed to have developers in the studio, but um, we're supposed to have them Skype in and play Strike Vector with us. Oh. Uh, that has been rescheduled for next Wednesday. So. Uh, so next Wednesday we'll, we'll have that and we'll have more devs. Um, of course, it's going to be a little bit uh, of a bigger job to get American developers in the studio. Uh, so it's a good start to have the and a very like cool couple of developers to have. We're lucky oh, yeah. that they're they're Danish, uh, but we plan to have more both in the studio and more um, skyping in to to play with and uh, talk about their games. So. Again, it's this guy I need to manipulate. So I'm assuming what you need to do is get him over to the dude so you can make him into a platform again. Yes. 
but... Or I, what I remember I uh, wanted people to do is... <laughs> when designing the game, <laughs> yeah. coming up with the whole visual style and... Nice. That's actually pretty nice, because then you know how this platform thing works. So yeah. the next time you see it, you're like, ah, okay. The, la the last time you, sh you encountered it, was that the first time? Yeah, that was okay. the first first time in the game. Yes. Um, yeah. The, again, the the game is is pretty good uh, about giving you like visual clues as to what it is you're supposed to do. As they talked about before, every time you get a new power, the the level up till yeah. you get that power is actually a demonstration of yeah, what yeah. you will be able that's, to do. That's smart. Yeah, it is. It's kind of. Uh, again, I I don't want to sound like an expert because I. Well, let me do it then. It wasn't <laughs> developing the game, yes. But uh, it's kind of a like Metroidvania-ish yeah. way of, of, uh, of uh, doing the whole thing. So the, the actual platforming, because uh, generally, I, th I mean, you could say it's a platformer, but it, platformers feel very differently. Mm. Uh, you have a game like Little Big Planet that some people find too floaty, and I, I think even Rayman and Mario feels different yeah, in their platforming. Definitely. So how would you describe... Uh, Max in the in the platforming. It's it's kind of funny that you uh, that you mentioned the little big planet because little big planet. The reason why so many are unsatisfied with the platforming that is that game is because it's a game that relies, the whole world is built around physics. Yeah. And a lot of this this world in in the, in the Max game is also built around physics and you manipulating the world, um, but the platforming is, is way way tighter. Okay. I mean, you you will see. So him it, it isn't floaty. No, you will see him like gain momentum, yeah. and and he will have a hard time to break, which he should yeah. be when he has momentum. That's what you expect him to yeah. do. But uh, but the controls are really tight. Oh, that was wrong. That was really wrong. So, so that um, was the death animation that you'd like to show. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it had been so long since yeah. I died last time, so maybe people didn't think you yeah. were able to die in the game. That's just me being. But awesome. it, but it is actually interesting because it does have. As Brank was saying in the chat, it def definitely looks like it has some little bit planted influences. This is awesome. Yeah, this is... Uh, the first time I saw this, I, I was just... Has, has this been in a film or another game? Or must have been. Oh, no. Because this really reminds me of something. Yeah, familiar. I was, I was uh, thinking the same way, but it is just like a really cool set piece I'm as well. feeling like it's a Pixar film. Maybe. But now it's going to annoy me for the rest of the stream that I... Yeah. That I don't remember. Might also be just be an effect that's been used. Yeah, in yeah pro it's probably been used multiple times. Yeah. Uh, but it, it does make for a really cool set piece. And again, as I said uh, several times when uh, while we were doing the interview, um, the game is really, really pretty. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can tell it's a, it's a next gen console. It's going to be interesting to see how good it looks and. And 360. Yeah, they they were really confident about uh, the 360 version. Uh, also looking. Yeah. Uh, or all. This is also a, a, one of those games that could I could see because of the art style look good. And you know I feel like some some art styles look easier to make look good. Yeah. Uh, same thing with uh, like oh you see some I think the, like the the. the Earlier games like any SNES games, some of those look better now than the first 3D games. Yeah. Uh, so. Nerd points for mentioning uh, SNES, by the way. Okay, should I like just throw out like Amiga and Commodore and like? I'll just go into it. Like. Get, like, can I get like experience points like here? For mentioning like, the, up, just for, for mentioning. Oh, so this is like bullet time. For mentioning the Amiga, you should just get instant level up. Okay. I like that it's not just like a set thing that you can actually do a little bit crooked to one side. Yeah, uh, um, there's, uh, there's uh, several points where you can actually almost direct. You know what? I want to give Darcy a gift. Because Darcy in the chat just pointed out Lord of the Rings first movie in Moria. It's Fellowship of the Ring in Moria. They're on the pillars. That's pretty damn Darcy, impressive. Darcy, I'm going to find a gift for you in a little bit, because that, thank you, that was not going to annoy me. Just a small gift from us so yeah. far. That was, that was proper proper stuff. And of course, it's from Lord of the Rings. When I think of <laughs> <laughs> When you think of anything, it can be related directly yeah. to Lord of the Rings. Already got Wookiees, and now we got Lord of the Rings. It's probably Best day ever, Nick? Yeah. 
Branko was pointing out, probably thinking of a jumping sequence in Enslaved. That, that could have been it, but I didn't uh, play a lot of uh, Enslaved, so... Okay. Uh, no, but, but, but I that know could, that, that... That could have been it as well. It's been in multiple things. Yeah, the whole well, domino is, thing. I know it was the, that scene in Fellowship that I was thinking of. We have some amazing viewers. Yeah, that is proper stuff. So you, know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Uh, Darsha, if uh, you're going to get a PM from uh, last behind the camera, and we'll get your address. And I'm actually going to give you... A lot of things, rings thing that I just got. I was just on a trip to London to see the new Lord of the Rings game. Oh yeah, looks really got good. Got a little notebook that says Shadow of Mordor and all that stuff on it. I'll, I'll ship that away to you. You quit. Darcia, if you're watching this, come back if you want your gift. Ah, I messed this up. Right, now you're going to destroy yourself. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Squish. Squish. I just want to live stream my life now because whenever I have one of those moments <laughs> where I'm like, what if I'm thinking of this thing and I can't put a finger on it, you know? And then you just someone just writes in the chat, be like, this is what you're thinking of. You should like get a get a set of uh, Google glasses or yeah. something like that. You just have a, like a 24 hour <laughs> stream like, of yourself. Yo, people in the chat, can you can you help yep. me? With it? What is my pin code? Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you remember the henchman? Yes. This is actually the first of uh, those that you encounter. <gasps> <laughs> I love the animation the is just yeah. brilliant. Wow, he's nice. Oh. See, I'm actually able to uh, direct the way. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I noticed how some of them were a little bit to one Whoa. side and one to the other. Yeah. That is pretty cool. It heals. And it's still, I mean, it's it's a little bit forgiving, but not too much. No. So you don't need to hit like a direct spot, but you can do it wrong. This is actually, this uh, kind of caught me by surprise the first time because oh, you what? actually actually get... You need to no, you don't need to, but you can. And actually, if it hits him, see, okay. if it hits him directly, he will just get... But do you need to do something with the bomb? No, not uh, not here, but you need to not die, constantly. I guess? It would be nice if you need to do something and then... Oh, does it explode now? It doesn't. It would be nice if it actually destroyed the... Yeah, the, the platform I built. And again... The uh, that's what I would have done if I did the game. Oh, so you're saying you didn't develop this game? Well, I made a better version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that the guys who, who actually did this game, yeah. developed this game, left by now. Yeah. Again. Him just getting <laughs> all the confused down there. It does look really nice. Oh, sh I actually think this would be. I haven't. Have I played? I've almost played all Xbox One games a little bit, and I think this is one of the better ones actually. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah, as a, as a launch title. Yeah. I believe this was a launch title, right? At least launch yeah, window. Or or launch window. Yeah. It's a really, really strong title, I would say. Um, oops. Oh crap, I need to be a bit faster. Uh, hello. Oh, and then you just jump over him or? Yep. Yeah. Oh. So he can he can destroy the, yeah. the block. But now you can't get up there, can you? Oh, okay, that's nice. You're not too clever. I wonder if you would have had time to get up there if you hadn't built it. I'm not gonna try. No, that. no, but it's nice. There might be multiple ways of yep. doing some of these. Yeah, they mentioned as much um, that there were a lot of puzzles that you could solve in several different ways. I, I think the worst thing in in a, any sort of puzzle, whether it's a puzzle game or it's just it can be in a first-person shooter where you need to do something, uh, is when you feel like it's not about guessing how to get through it, it's about guessing the how way the they thought yeah. of it. Where you're like, this should work. Yeah, I agree. I was like, I this is uh, I came up with a smarter way of doing it. Yeah, and 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 again, on the other hand, um, 
puzzle games where you come up with a solution that isn't necessarily yeah. the right way yeah. to do it, but it actually works. That's it's awesome. It's just one of the yeah. most giving gaming it's so experiences. so rewarding, yeah. This was also, also one of the puzzles that really, uh, like, the, the solution is so simple, but, but I was... It didn't cross my mind because I didn't think it was something that you could do in the game. You need to raise that box. Yes. But if I do it like this, I can just go like this. I can't make it. But then uh, you need. Okay. Do you need that thing on the left or anything? The pillar? Over thing? here, uh, before, there was one of the collectible Okay, because I was thinking you need to move the box over there to get up there. No, the, the solution is way more simple. Okay. Um, so if I could go like this... Oh, but to get that up there, wouldn't you need to do that? I just wanted to... Ah, then you need to put it on the side? Okay. Yeah. And again, it's so simple. Hmm. But you needed to put it on the side and have on the left pillar to get up to the left, right? No, I could actually uh, leave it as standard yeah. to get up on the left. Okay. But to get up on the rope, I need to go... I, like I, I would actually have flipped it, I think, if I made the game. So you could, no, I'm not going to be smart, <laughs> but I like that sort of thing where it's easier to, to move on in a level. Yeah. I think Mario games often tend to do that, but if you want the star or the, the extra star, thing, you need to, you need to yeah. do it a little bit harder. And I believe I will be entering a new world. You can, like, see it's a huge border. Yeah. Um, but I should be entering a new world now, and that's probably been my favorite world so far, uh, graphically. So the, the worlds are different? Yeah. So like, you can tell now it's a new world? Yeah, and I mean, okay. already now it just looks really beautiful. Oh, crap. So that was the next death animation you wanted to yes, show? Yes, exactly. Now we saw it, now we don't need to do it again. And uh, what Thomas likes to do here is not tell us before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Okay, let's get this going. It's kind of a janky rope, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, crap. But Thomas, we've already seen this animation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I'm probably going to forget a couple of times. Ha Do you know, has there been other like smaller games like this released on Xbox One so far? I don't think so, yet. Uh, That's also nice for, for the the developers to be like the first of yeah, these tiny definitely and and it's kind of funny because uh, both on xbox one and definitely also on uh, playstation 4 right now the the next wave or the first wave i should say of indie games is actually something that i'm uh, one of the things i'm, I'm looking uh, most forward to yeah. on, uh, on ps4 yeah. and uh, on uh, xbox one just because uh so much Attention has been uh, has been used on it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it will be something like, really yeah. amazing. I mean, one of the next uh, PS4 PS4 indie games we should see is probably Octodad, right? Yeah. And and I tried like an early version of that, and I was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, actually, I think Octod. I'm so looking forward to playing that. My first GDC. We're at GDC. We're going around doing the big appointments like you always do. Uh, and then there's this whole indie area with a lot of small guys and Bengt had set up an appointment with two or three guys from an uh, American university yep. who were as like in their university as a project were doing this little game called Octodad. Yeah. So there was just like two or three guys and it was just like, oh, it's just this cool project. And they gave us t-shirts. I still have my yellow Octodad t-shirt from back there. Yep. And now they've actually like, made like proper versions of it, but this was like they made like a few and I think we got the last couple of two t-shirts or something made the game, and then like a couple of years later, like it's it's on the Sony press conference yeah. at E3, and it's like, what happened to this tiny little game that yep. they demoed that was just a school project, so. Yeah. And this is, this is I thought it was just that game that they had built, or like continued on, but it's actually kind of like a sequel. It, uh, it's kind of like a refined yeah. version of But But of some the things are idea. different, and so it's not totally just that game that they, they, they built, but I'm so looking forward to playing that after seeing that at, at like, just meeting these guys, it was like, oh, we're just making a game. Yeah, and, uh, and again, uh, at the place I tried it, there was like there was a line for it, yeah. and it was clear to see that there was a lot of, a lot of the people trying it out, who's just like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. 
And I tried it and I was like, just moving around because you have to manipulate each limb is so funny. Yeah, yeah. And you look so clumsy, like going around and grabbing random stuff. And But yeah, it, it seems really amazing. And I do believe that's one of the first uh, indie games we'll yeah. see on. Uh, I, I cool. haven't tried it yet myself, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But it, it's so, I think that's really maybe the biggest benefit of, of this job is getting to have those sort of experiences where you get to see them early on and yeah. how I would never have guessed that that is not because it wasn't good but I just n never would have thought that it would have been picked up that, that way and actually become a proper game. No. Uh, oh. Uh, Branko mentions uh, Tale of Two Brothers. He thinks it looks kind of similar to this art-wise. I can see that. A little bit. I wouldn't actually go as far. Um, I think uh, Tale, uh, Tale of Two Brothers uh, is much more moody than this. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, this is more cartoony and this is definitely more vibrant. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think it looks it's also an extent, but I, I, I see what he, I, I don't think it's completely the same, but I see what he means. Yeah. That it does have something similar. And then Branko asks for uh, more emphasis if they do another one. Uh, on improvising, setting out traps for your uh, hopefully smarter enemies. Uh, I mean, look at this. This is just yeah, it looks pretty cool. Oh. So this is actually one of the, the places where I'll get a new power. Okay. Um, and you should see that pretty much everything from now is uh, regarded to that power. It's a demonstration of that power. That's drawing branches. I mean, I remember when uh, the first uh, Treen, did you ever play yeah. that? Game I don't think I played the first one, but I played the second one. Yeah, when that was released, and that was also a really good game. Um, people were just kind of amazed that new technology could be used to, to produce uh, 2D games. That, yeah. that because, yeah, maybe because it was 2D, the detail could be even higher. Yeah, yeah. With can all you, the can actually, can you explain for, because I had this conversation with Sofran earlier, maybe people wouldn't stream wants to know, what is the difference between you call it a 2D game and a 2.5D and game? A uh, 2D and 2.5D and game, you often see uh, a sudden, like, for instance here, it's, it's like a shifted view yeah. of the world, uh, whereas 2D is just flat. Plain flat. So it's it's when you see depth, or is it when you can actually go? Because then you have something like Little Big Planet where you have multiple planes as well. I don't. I would probably say that's a definition question yeah. uh, for for each. I would say that it, that is when you can see, see depth. depth. Yeah. yeah. So this is what you would call a two and a half D game. Yeah, and and most games today uh, that works on two D plan is made of polygons. Yeah. And when they're made of polygons, you will oftentimes see the perspective shift. Yeah. So I would say most two D games today are Absolutely. actually two point five D. Yeah. But that, that's something I think you can really add now to games compared to older games. Where it's, you, see, you might not think of it when you're playing because you're concentrating, but if you see in the background here, it looks gorgeous and you have all this going on in the background. Uh, yeah. yeah. And also, um, what's, what's really funny about 2D games uh, is that 2D games in particular used to be made in pixels, right? Yeah. And one of the reasons you don't see that today is that making games in pixels is actually for most people, much more time consuming than doing games in 3D. Okay. Whereas in, and, and when you build a game in 3D, uh, you, can, uh, you can use systems to apply lights and Yeah, and okay, so they basically like create the world and then you can just walk sideways instead of creating a new Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I'm not a games creator no, by no. any, so, so I don't want to diminish the work that no, goes no, no, into no. producing graphics. But like that is how a lot of people build games today. Yeah. So it, this is actually a 3D world that we don't know. Yeah, this is made of uh, fully of polygons. Okay. Um, well, I like this, how you have to change it after. It's also fun to see uh, not that they have a lot of similarities, but I, when you have a Danish developer making a, a 2D 
platformer, I think, of uh, of Limbo. Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. Yeah, the Limbo guys are also still developing a new game, yeah. even though it will probably be a long time before we see anything from it. I think they had a post not too long ago about they were looking for testers. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know how, what that means for uh, for how far they are, uh, but... Uh, okay, that's encouraging. Something is going on, at least. Yeah. Yeah, the first Limbo game was in development for also close to five years or so, I believe. But there might be a bigger studio now. We That's true. Know. That's true. Hope it would be awesome soon to do a stream with those guys. With oh them, yeah. With their next game. Really looking forward to whatever they do. I've, I've, I think I've bought Limbo every place I could now. Yeah. Um, I uh, have it the same way. Did you ever play the? I don't know if it's on the Vita version actually, but I noticed that they've ad they added something to the PS3 version that wasn't in the 360 version. I am. Uh, I think so. At least there was at least another trophy for something. But uh, do you remember? Did you do all the eggs? No. There's something with. I, I think this was. Correct me if I'm wrong. In the in the chat, uh, there was this where you could continue the level. You could find all these eggs. And I think how it worked was that every time you broke broke an egg, there's a certain place in the in the in the game where you could go a different way and come into this cave. And there would be a, like a small hill in the ground, just like a couple of feet tall. Mm -hmm. And on that hill, every time you broke an egg, there would be a light. When, or the lights were already be there, but they would turn on when you broke the eggs. And when you got all the lights, a door would open. Okay. And you'd get to an extra level. Wow. Uh, which was completely in the dark. Okay. So you would encounter all the things you saw in the game, but in the dark, so you only could play with sound. <laughs> and there was, I don't think there were checkpoints. Okay. Um, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Like I don't remember. I, I tend to. Th I know. I can. I played Call of Duty yesterday. I tend to curse sometimes when yep, I go. Yep. But I'm generally very mellow and understanding. I think uh, sometimes, at least. Uh, I. I. As I said, I don't know if it was in stream. I have never broken a controller. I don't think I've ever thrown a controller. I was close to doing that, playing that level, because that was like a long level of just being. Like, no. And you just hear like, oh, saw, and then you had to do the like tiptoe thing where you're like, can I get to this point? It's like, yes, can I get, no. I mean, it, it was another time, it was a long time ago, uh, but I distinctly remember having a Super Nintendo controller with the biting marks in the left <laughs> side of it. <laughs> the, I you, you don't know who did that. <laughs> That's awesome. That might have been because well, I don't, of... I don't even understand that. Why would you bite your controller? <laughs> I get the throwing where you're like, oh, oh, but then like, you were like, it was probably just rage. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I might have been focused around if, the game. If you see Thomas get angry, then like, can you warn me? Because then I can like move over so he doesn't bite my. Might bite my might neck. might have been been because of a game called uh, Punch Out for the Super Nintendo, <laughs> where someone had a record I couldn't really beat. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I wanted to show this room is that that's one of the medallion pieces, ah, okay. and I'm not actually gonna go for it right now. I think you should. I'm not actually going <laughs> to go for it right now. So uh, I would really like to see how it is when you pick up one of those medallions. Yeah, another time. <laughs> Our next okay. live stream of uh, Max, the Curse of the Brother. Okay, Branko remembers that level. Uh, sorry? In Limbo, the, the dark yeah. level. Uh, but yeah, if people remember if it was in, if what versions it was in. And then there was that one trophy that I just instantly gave up on the, to complete the game with only five wait, deaths. Wait, 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 wait. You gave yeah, up on yeah. a trophy? No, no, I've, I'm, I, you got to know your limits, dude. That, that no, you, you have to explain yeah, what no. kind of trophy is that. Pre previously, I probably would have gone for it, but you just know that the thing I have that is the problem with trophies and 100% in games, because I, I do it on all platforms, is I want to get everything. And uh, if I set my mind to get something, I will continue even though it's frustrating. Which is why I don't really want to play something like Super Meat Boy. Because it's just, mm. it's just going to go wrong. But uh, yeah. But what, what was the, so the need specific to, challenge? So you need to start the game and then play through the whole game. I think also in one sitting. And only have five deaths. Okay. That's... Insane. Yeah. Cause, That's and I've heard people insane. who went for it, they're like, the problem is that 
you can you need to play it through it a couple of times to know all the puzzles. One thing is remembering like how the puzzles work when you get to them, but also because it's so long, just uh, you need to be so on your toes the whole time, or you will have like a little death because yeah. of something. It's like, Jesus, this is actually going to be uh, a bit. Exciting because this was one of the challenges that took me a long while. To yeah, I remember you were playing this the last time I checked, uh, actually before this. Yeah, game. and I, Branko says he actually ha hasn't beaten it himself. He came up, gave up after 40 tries. Okay, master of ballad of branches, nice. Yeah. One thing I'd like on both consoles. Uh, now it's like when, whenever there's both an achievement and a trophy pops up, you can like press and you get more details. But yeah. it like takes you out of the game. Yeah. I would just like to press something and just get what it instead of being pulled out, you know? Yeah. Because now I'm assuming it's something with branches, but it would be nice to know just quick press, give me the details what I did, yep. and then instead of having to. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I've really never been that compelled um, by uh, by the whole uh, achievement or trophy thing. Uh, Unless we're ter talking certain games where I know I actually, you know, I'm gonna play them so much anyways. That, that and, is what I and, use it for. And oftentimes it's also um, games where I'm competing with my friends, yeah. like for high scores or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but the whole thing, to to me, and I know this um, this definitely doesn't go for anyone. But to me, I've seen enough weak, not weak games, but I've seen enough games where achievements and trophies. Uh, the the impl implementation of them seem kind of weak to me, yeah. and it it it, it, it yeah, to it me turns ruins into it a little bit, and it, it, it to me turns into like um, just a, a artificial way of of expanding the the, yeah. the game time. Uh, on the other hand, I've also seen games where it's really really clever. Um, I mean, that is the whole thing that some people get annoyed with when me or someone like me asks like, how are the trophies? It's actually more about are they well implemented? Yeah, because I think it's okay to do trophies or achievements that are. Um, like finish a chapter or finish the game and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that's fine. But what I really like is when they manage to add ones that make you play the game differently. And the reason why I often check, I try not to check too much, but sometimes I check websites for like, are there broken ones or ones that, um, that can be problems, like if you don't play a certain way. It's, it's more that I would actually like just to play through the game and then go for it afterwards. Mm. But um, and then if it can make me, you know, do things that I wouldn't have thought of, so it adds play time to a game is, is really, I think, awesome. Yeah, one of the most clever ways I, I remember, or that was probably one of the first games that kind of blew my mind with its uh, implementation of, um, oh, wait a minute, of uh, achievement points, was, uh, I believe, the first or second uh, uh, Geometry Wars. Okay. Because it had this achievement where it just said uh, passive, and you had to uh, avoid all enemies. You couldn't shoot for like two minutes or so. And at that point in time, that hadn't been seen before. Yeah. And that was actually a completely new way of playing the game. Yeah, that, and it's awesome if they make them fit the game. I like something like Flower, where they have one where you need to just put down the controller for five or 10 minutes and not play. Really? Because that's like a, like a yes. game that fits that. Yep. And I was like, oh, they have trophies in Flower? Oh, I don't, that doesn't work, but they have made trophies like that. And that's really nice. Yeah, uh, and I love things in like Red Dead where there's one for finding an, a woman and tying her up and putting her on the train tracks. So that, that goes with the, like, the Wild West. Uh, but it's not something I would have done just playing the game, most no. likely. So when they can think of, of things like that, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the whole meta thing, of course, that it's nice competing with other. Yeah. Other people, uh, but there's there's that thing of like doing easy games or hard games. But I can't actually remember what it is I'm supposed to do here. I think it's also nice that you can. I could go into the, your profile and see how far you're in a game by by completing trophies for chapters and that yep. sort of thing. Oh wait a minute. So how are we on uh, time? We have 15 minutes left. Okay. Oh, there's another branch. Yeah. Was also what I missed. <laughs> oh. There you go, Maxi. Okay, so 
This guy over here is actually throwing bombs at me. And I need to direct them down here. So they, they will deflect. Ah, oh, okay, nice. And then so they don't run away. Yeah, the first time I did that, I, I didn't notice uh, that I could build a wall behind yeah, him. So I just ran past. Yeah, so I had but to time it. Keeps it keeps rolling down now. Yeah, I can just... Ah, come on. It's gonna happen His again. angle will actually vary uh, depending on where Max is placed. Oh, okay. As you can see. And then you can jump down and, and run past. Yep. That's where I, I sometimes would get so impatient, I would just remove the wall and get a bomb in my face. That might be too Can you steep. tell how these, or when it's like a branch that will stick, or when it's a rope? Is it different colors? Yeah. Or? yeah. Actually, I don't believe I have the power to create ropes here. Or okay. mines here. See, this was one of the um, other well, uh, puzzles that really stumped me. Um, and uh, if you watched the interviews, uh, the interview before, I mentioned that, that at certain points in the game, Max will actually offer up hints, like, maybe yeah. if I did this. Uh, and he did that here? He, did, he does that here. It's apparently, uh, the developers told us that that only happens a couple of times in the game, so this was probably one of the puzzles that also bothered some of the testers, game testers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, um, so far, I had only been drawn, like, you know, boxes and... I don't know, like branches I could jump to. What I hadn't thought of was that. Oh, that was an ugly one. But you can also draw. <gasps> yeah, not like that. Uh, okay. Wait for it. I'm waiting, Thomas. Yeah, we're gonna wait a long time, Nick. Yeah, but. I no, but you can also draw like a wheel. Ah, that's smart. I probably would have done that as well if I'd made the game. But that is really clever, yeah, that's and really and cool. and it's it's the sort of thing that you haven't done at all. I don't think I would have thought of that. No, I know you wouldn't have <laughs> thought of that, Nick. I you're actually consider myself quite good at these sort of you're games. I remember multiple Lego games being played in the office. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to <laughs> bring out those damn Lego games. <laughs> That's because I'm like a Lego Meister. Lego Meister. That should be your official yeah. title. Where where you're like, it's impossible to fix this puzzle. I'm like, have you pressed the red button? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something about the logic and oh, squish in the in the Lego games that, yeah. that just. But I think they've gotten better actually. Uh, if you go the back to some of the earlier Lego games, no, they no, are no. tough. They have I, actually. I th I thought that from uh, from the, the uh, Lord of the Rings game yeah. and forward, I believe it was the Lord of the Rings game and forward. They became better and better and better at actually uh, yeah. doing the puzzles. I think from from the the last Star Wars game as well. Oh. Uh, yeah. Harry Potter ones are a little bit different. I think Lego Pirates was pretty good. Uh, like they were good at explaining the puzzles. Um, and I think it's like the Lego Clone Wars was, was really good in that way as well. Yeah. But I think I, I'm, I didn't finish the Her Lego Harry Potter game, so maybe that's why. And I think going back to now with all the different magic abilities mm. that you have, that makes those really hard. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see that they improve because it's not that the actual puzzles are easier, it's just that they're better explaining how the world works. Yeah, exactly. And that was one of the, my main problems with the Lego games before because. And when it comes down to it, a lot of the puzzles in the Lego games is about you smashing things, building them up to something yeah. else, and applying that thing to yeah. a different place in the world. Um, and it just didn't always seem logical to me. Oh, and then you need to make him... Oh. oh that's Squish! No! Oh. oh, that was close. Do You wanted that Indiana Jones moment where it's like close? Okay. Nice. Of course. I'm getting uh, trophy tips in the chat now from Branko. Linger in shadows. Easiest platinum. Yes. 
I, I actually remember. don't really have time for those anymore. I, I remember that uh, in the start of uh, the lifetime of uh, the 360, that became like a whole gaming subculture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people figuring out where they could get, get the Most easiest. Most so in the yeah. shortest time, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, s I still Again, go for that a little bit sometimes, but I just don't have, I don't feel like I have time anymore. And I tend to just want to play yeah. some of the good games, but I want to go, I still think it's fun and it's nice having another like the meta game of having trophies is, is still fun uh, again i uh i found this to be a pretty clever puzzle in that you draw a branch you cut it uh, and then you can and lift you it up oh it that's up really like i like that a lot actually yeah and then you lift it out a little bit more in the middle as well oh i was about to say doesn't it tip yep and on purpose you made a curved one right oh yeah thought so of course, pro player. If you notice, there actually, was technically, you are. You're getting paid to do this. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That does not mean that I compete uh, on a pro level. <laughs> Headfield. I was about to say, is that our, our friend James? Oh, it is. Hello. Hey. James. That was close. And I Oh, nice. Oh, you need to go that way. <gasps> I want to get the eye over there. Can you imagine if this wasn't a game? And, uh, like, if you're in this, if this is not a game, you, you are Max in this world. Making some of these jumps and these, like, risks, or is like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna raise this and build this thing over here, and then I'm gonna make this jump into the next rope, into the next rope, because I want that eye over there. I want that medallion. <laughs> I mean, one, one puzzle would just like, take like a week or a month. I would just month. sit down and be like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this for a medallion. What you need to remember is that it is because of the love of his brother. I just, like, can, can I go into the forest that way instead? Just walk around it? Yeah, but would, would, would it really be cool to save your brother and say yes. all those uh, cool things I could have collected? Because Thomas, you know so. what? I would just save my brother. I wouldn't care about, oh, it wasn't a cool way. <laughs> Who doesn't go for the cool points, Nick? I okay, don't. maybe I should just progress, actually. Five minutes, Thomas. Do you think you can do this in five minutes? This? Yeah. <coughs> Easy as pa. Shouldn't have said that, should I? No, it There's two ways of looking at that. One is, don't play like smart and shit before. The other way that I like to go, that I figure out is way better is, you need to do it before. You need to be like a smart ass before. Yep. Cause you, that might be your only chance. Yep. So yes, I, I guess I could say tomorrow we are doing, uh, just like every Friday our show is divided into two. Uh, we are doing uh, games to look for and news, uh, and I think we'll yeah we'll start out with news um, first hour, and then games to look for afterwards. We will look ahead to February, see what great games are coming out, uh, and talk about that. Nice. And then on Monday, we take a look back at January, and uh, talk about the games that came out, what games were the best, and we're going to try to I think find. The game that was the best of January, and okay. we'll try to do that every month. Yeah. Uh, try to have different editors on, so it won't be like, oh, then you know what what game is game of the year at the end, because it will be different people every time. You'll let's can you just say one uh, month where you were here, it might be a racing game where if you are not here, it yeah. might not be someone liking ra racing games. Can you uh, just uh, refresh my mind on uh, what candidates are for uh, for uh, for January? this month? Yeah. I think the, the one that I would most likely go for right now is Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't, what, what else has that come out? Yeah, I haven't uh, tried the 
definitive edition? I think it's hard to say it's worth getting again. I would I would buy it again. Uh, I think it's so much fun. It looks better. If you haven't played it, I think I think it's actually the game that I would get first on next gen. Uh, if you haven't played it, yeah. just go out and, and make sure you play Tomb Raider. Yeah, it's, it's a great it's game. It's a great game uh, yeah, in general. Uh, the thing is also you get all the DLC that was out, oh, yeah, with the, which I think in, in the Tomb Raider isn't as valuable as it is in other games, at least for me, because it's skins for multiplayer and that sort of thing. Yeah. There, I don't think there's any like single player content there, uh, but it's really, really cool game. I love playing it again. Yeah, and, and I don't know about you, but but just like, uh, I mean, they, they, easy references, of course, Uncharted, but like Uncharted, when playing Tomb Raider, you just instantly feel that this is like a major production game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just, I think the main thing for Tomb Raider is just, it's fun to play. Yeah, um, it is. But yeah, so on Monday we'll, we'll figure out what game was the best in January according to the people who are on that show. Cool. And then we'll do the first show uh, in Game Rector Live history where we talk about movies. Oh, and nice. So we're going to start having a monthly movie show. Uh, it'll be the first time, uh, will be on Monday. So again, cool. a two-part show. Mm -hmm. uh, should be fun. I uh, think we'll look a little bit ahead to the Oscars uh, and maybe a little bit ahead for uh, uh, talk about uh, 2014 in general, uh, what films are coming out. Uh, so yeah, that should be fun. Cool. And then Sounds we'll play funny. some games the rest of the week. Yeah. Of course, the our Friday nights is back. Uh, next Friday, Friday next week. Yeah. The uh, plan is to do it on 360, but more on that uh, on the Facebook page, mm. like always. And as always, you can of course subscribe to everything we do. You can we even do subscribe all the things. To, yeah, we do all the things. Yes, you can even uh, subscribe to, oh, yeah, to, the to magazine. our ma magazine. Yeah. Uh, both iPad and physical copy. Yeah. So of course the print magazine is free, but you, if you want, you can pay for the postage and get it in the mail. And yeah. if you just want to download our iPad magazine, it's really cool as well. Yeah. So. might be colored in that, but... Uh. <laughs> but yeah, if you're watching this, there's there. I think there's a good chance you might like the magazines as well, or yep. the websites. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is actually... Uh, Final Puzzle. Yeah, and this is probably going to be the final puzzle. This is also um, another one of, I don't know if we can call them temples or whatever, but of the places where you get a new power. Okay. Yeah. So it actually fits pretty good with uh, this being the final one. And as you will probably notice already, there's vines everywhere, which should give you an indication of what I'll be able to do. I'm just completing it. I don't know, Thomas, tell me. <laughs> You're still <laughs> trying to figure it out. What the hell does he mean? The weight is killing me. What is this magic? I love lines, though. I love the band, the oh, lines. Oh, I love the six second videos. I love the compilation of the six second videos. Yeah. That's almost too much. I'm like, wait, what happened? I'm, like, uh -huh. I'm just screaming with laughter. I mean, there's so many good ones. Nice. All right, I think with that, we're going to end today's stream. Be back tomorrow, just like every day, 4 till 6, Central European time for Game Reactor Live. Yeah, and uh, if you missed some of this stream, uh, the first hour we were actually, we had uh, two of the developers from Press Play who uh, have created this game that we're currently playing yeah. in studio. So if you didn't watch that, make sure to go back and watch first it. First hour of the stream, yeah. First hour of the stream. And uh, as we mentioned before, uh, having developers in studio is, or at least on Skype, is definitely something we hope to do more. Yeah. Something we are going to do more. Yeah. Um, we like it. Just uh, getting direct access to the developers, and I think, I hope, I should say, you like it as well. Yeah. All right. See you tomorrow, guys. Yep. Yeah. Bye.